Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me all. I'm planning to present um, the webinar presentation uh, on the how psychiatric patients are finding hope of recovery through art. My name is Jo Waters Pawoski, and I'm the lead of OT and education at the Dean, which is the um, PIC unit down in Sussex. So, I shall start my presentation. She says. Um, how I've done the presentation is that I have written stuff on the slides and I am going to talk through the work that I've, um, the written work I've put up here um, and then I'll, I'll add some bits to it. So um, how psychiatric patients are finding hope of recovery through art. Um, we're unable to identify a written theory or measuring tool that records if patients find hope of recovery through art. However, creative arts offer a variety of opportunities, which may include an element of overcoming fear, but also experiencing hope. Following the sense of achievement from initial engagement, patients then develop their own level of hope and recovery by engaging in creative work. This can lead on to wider recognition from hospital exhibitions, to events in the local community and opportunities to present work at a national level, which demonstrates the value of working with art. All this could not be possible without staff who have the confidence, the ability to inspire creativity and belief in our patients to support their creative potential. There's no um, answer to why we have outstanding results for patient artwork um, from the Kersler uh, Award Scheme. We have supported the Kersler for a number of years and have been able to see how it has grown um, and how it's become a, a, a quite a, an annual event now for all PIC hospitals to, to access. Um, I been very fortunate to um, work quite closely with Kersler um, and this um, has developed over the few years that I've been working at the Dean. Um, just to give you a bit of background about me, I'm a professional artist and um, I trained as a textile designer. So for me, I'm able to take um, ideas that come through and support patients and staff to um, see these ideas through to a final piece of artwork. Um, I think my skill in knowing that things can be pulled together and can be managed um, allows for some of the project work that we've done over the years to get to a standard where we can confidently put through to Kersler. Um, I am going to talk about Kersler later on in this um, presentation. The other um, partnership that we have is with the um, educating of how valuable artwork um, and creative work, looking at poetry, looking at uh, music and song writing, um, as well as the visual work that we do here, is the um, allowing all staff from all disciplines to be part of seeing the work and hearing the work that we do at the hospital. And that entails um, us showing our work across the hospital. We have wonderful space here that we can actually do that. Um, and we make sure that we regularly change the artwork so that uh, it, it's fresh and people are, are sort of able to, to see the, the, the work that goes on. This, um, so it's, it's like valuing patient artwork. We also um, offer 
patient-wide art competitions, um, which is very productive and, and also get, gets um, each of the wards to sort of be quite um, competitive with each other. And um, it, it sort of encourages motivation and, um, and enjoyment as well. The um, presentation, um, I hope, will um, be able to give you an idea of how we provide arts at the Dean and our pers perspective on promoting arts across the hospital <laughs> and further um, into the community and wider. It's been a long time. So I just want to say that um, for from initial ideas created through individual or group discussions on the ward um, as part of an OT activity, the presentation will be able to show you some of the work that's been created. Unfortunately, I can't put any of the music work that we do onto this presentation. Um, I just want to say before I carry on that um, the ideas that come through from patients are supported by staff. However, we need to make sure that the ideas are actually accessible for patients to manage. Um, we can't be promoting artwork um, that ends up staff doing it. So it, 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 that's why we have to be very um, able to, to break ideas down into a very basic format so that um, patients can actually achieve um, what they want to achieve. Um, so that, that's more so when we're looking at mural work or large canvas work or large um, textile piece uh, projects. So this um, piece of work is, is an example. Um, it, it won a silver award um, murals in last year, and it's called the Tree of Hope. Uh, this piece of work was um, originally um, came through a discussion group with a group of patients on a personality disorder ward, um, and they were looking at hope and recovery, um, and they started to look at um, affirmations. We, we provided affirmation cards, you know, the, the reasoning behind why people find words supportive um, and how some people find words a good way of coping with um, difficult times. The um, idea for doing a mural came from the patients, um, and so they came up with the idea of a, a tree because they felt that the tree was the tree of life, um, and then what we then worked on is, is sort of looking at how we wanted to design that tree and how to incorporate the, the whole recovery and hope um, concept. The, uh, for this to actually be allowed to happen, we, we have to approach the um, operations manager to find out if we're able to use one of the wards in the wall to, to paint on it. And that's something that the patients themselves take ownership of, and they, they will contact the, the manager and ask them to visit the ward. They will show them their ideas and they will ask them, uh, you know, to get permission to use it. The levels that we work with um, with individuals is that we have to then look at um, a piece of work that we know that most people can add to the the main work. So for some of the patients, all they wanted to do was just cut out a leaf and decorate it and maybe put one word or two words on it. Others um, are more ambitious and they have more confidence and they feel they can take on a bigger part with the, the artwork. So um, I think a couple of patients here actually, with the support of the occupational therapy assistant, they um, planned and drew out the tree. So. Um, and then started to think about colours and really made a conscious decision on how they wanted this whole mural design to, to be um, to work. The um, 
nice thing about a mural is that some patients don't aren't interested to begin with. Um, but they actually are brought in and um, um, to it by, by peer discussion, by excitement, and, and they will actually then freely contribute and do something um, themselves. The um, project lasted for 12 weeks, um, and for this to happen, it would have taken time has to be taken out of, of um, each day because there's quite a lot of work involved and um, it was very apparent that, that there was a core group of patients, um, three, who really were very motivated and would independently go in and actually work on that piece, that, that mural. Um, so that, that's just the idea of, of, of that mural there. But it looks very impressive in the room and it's um, a piece of work that even um, external commissioners or um, people from NHS England, they will come in and, and they will be shown this mural and also looking at the other artwork across the hospital. So um, the content of the presentation is um, looking at art forms, how can hope and recovery be experienced through making art? Set of standard components, creative education, achievement and social inclusion, patient voice, and then a summary. I'm going to start off looking at the art forms. Um, for those that aren't aware, um, art forms are broken into two categories. You've got the visual art forms and the non-visual art forms. Um, and so for, for us at the Dean, we focus mainly on uh, painting, drawing, textiles, photography, and soft furnishings, um, murals, and then mixed media, which will come into any of the, the art forms that people are, are wanting to do. Um, so the non-visual art forms is the writing, looking at fiction, non-fiction, poetry, music. Um, unfortunately, we'd love to do film here, but we haven't been able to, to manage that as yet. And spoken text is something that we do do, and we do that through our music uh, studio. We have the facilities to support um, patients to um, read their poems or um, a book that they've written or a short story, and that can be then made onto a CD. And that work, um, if the patient agrees and they feel confident, if then we um, will ask if they would consider putting it forward to Kersler. We don't force anybody to enter any work into Kersler. Um, we It's very much a, um, a two-way uh, process. We inform people of the Kersler Trust and we um, allow them the opportunity to look at getting their work to a wider um, audience. So to start with, how can hope and recovery be experienced through making art? I think um, as an artist myself, it, it's quite a complex process. There's a lot of um, mental emotion that goes into making art. There's a lot of controversy and, and you know, trying to sort of argue in your own head about what it is you like, what it is you don't like. And I think for, for me, when I'm working with, with the patients and supporting staff to support people to engage in art, it, it's also allowing them to experience fun, um, to allow individuals to make a mess and not be scared of that. Um, and that's something that can actually be quite a big process um, and, and need sort of um, time for people to feel confident about making marks and, and that they're not necessarily mean anything to them at the time, but they, nobody's judging them. It's, it's about not judging what they're doing. It's supporting um, individuals to understand why they, they criticize what they do. Um, and a lot of our patients um, are perfectionists and that, that 
can be sort of contradictory to, to some of the processes that we support in our, our creators' work. So um, it's supporting them to look at why they're critical and um, it's why they they find it difficult to, to make a mess, um, to not know what they're working from, where it's taking them, but allowing them to sort of actually free up and just enjoy a process for what it is and not to look into it too much. I don't, I'm not an art therapist, but I do believe um, art is a, a therapeutic activity for everyone and it's something that should be um, promoted and, and um, encouraged. Um, the patients also um, are able to start to look at reflecting and evaluating their own work. Um, and this again is, is a skill that we need to manage them with because they they will take that into the critical self. Um, and so, it, as, a, as a therapist, it's, it's important that we don't dwell on the negative um, aspects of what they're coming through with, but actually look at how they can develop ideas and take ideas forward um, and, and sort of give them some form of um, learning process in, in, in maybe bringing in references so that they can look at other people's work, other artists' work, or listen to music while they're working, something to help them realize that it is a process that they're in, engaging in um, and that there will be an outcome and it will be a positive outcome at the end. It's about them helping to use um, knowledge and skills that they may have gained from when they were a child, um, playing, um, but feeling that, that they weren't allowed to play, but they, they remember playing with paint. They um, A lot of people like the idea of, of using ceramics and pottery and clay. Um, we, we can only offer that in a very um, basic format, um, but they, they, some people start liking to, to get their hands messy. They, they've never been able to feel and experience that without being told off. Or it, it, It's about us giving them an opportunity just to, to um, have fun and um, not, not be judgmental on what they're doing. Um, learning new skills and techniques. Um, a lot of um, patients say they want to learn to draw, and so we will um, do some drawing classes and we, we support that. The problem we find with that is that people are very critical that they're not able to draw exactly what they see and a lot of them want to be able to draw photographically so that what they, the image they're creating is exactly what they see and that's something that as therapists we have to overcome, help them overcome and help them to understand that they're, they're just learning techniques they're learning to observe, they're, they're learning to identify that they may have a, their own style um, and, and supporting them to develop that style. Um, looking at experimenting in different environments, resources and materials, um, we try and take uh, patients away from the main ward area into uh, either one of the activity rooms or um, into the main art room off the ward. We will um, support uh, patients if they have ideas or the, the sort of interest is that we will take them to the patient computer and help them to look up ideas and, and gain get resources off the um, internet. And then they can, if they want, they can take those and use those. Um, and sometimes uh, patients will, will not feel confident to do anything with the resources, but you know, if they're allowed to use scissors, then they can cut the images out and use them as collage, or they can tear the images up and, and use them as collages. And, and it's about us just allowing them to feel safe with whatever they want to do. We have a, quite a range of materials here at the Dean. We're very fortunate um, that we're, we're supported to buy um, good materials. I'm a big believer in if we're going to be supporting people to, to make art, is that they should have the best that we can provide. 
so um, I tend to make sure that we've got a really good range of acrylic paints, that we have good quality canvases, um, that the paper that we use is, is um, of good quality, and that we have a range of um, paper, pencils and crayons and, and felt tips and oil pastels and pastels, things that we know that um, they can do the best they can using those materials. Um, I'm, I'm sort of reading through this list, but just to, you know, the, the um, creative thinking is, is just, as it says, it's about supporting people to develop their creative thinking processes. And uh, some individuals have really do have a blank canvas. They really don't know where to come from, what, what to start with. Um, but they've shown an idea or they've they've talked about wanting to engage in some form of art. Um, so it, that can be a um, starting point for us to um, help them to look through using words as ideas, using color, getting them to discuss, um, you know, identify what their favorite color is. And, and, and out of that um, initial discussion work, which can take quite a while, we can just start pulling you know, colours together if they, they, they've shown an interest in colours, then we can get tissue paper involved, we can get the pastel colours involved and then just start getting them introduced into um, not being afraid of, of um, colour or materials and things and just, again, I keep going back to experiencing fun, but it's just allowing them to, to have a, a, a time to, to, to just experiment. Um, the personal development this is that I worked with a patient who felt she had no identity um, and she had no use um, and wasn't sure what, what she was all about. Um, but from a conversation she was having with me, um, she spoke about um, taking photographs and that she felt restricted in the fact that she couldn't take photographs anymore and it was something that she had done privately when she was um, living at home. And so from that we then developed the idea of um, doing a photographic project. She um, started to, she wanted to know all the technical stuff about how to use a camera, um, so we managed to get books and we managed to take her through that whole sort of um, using cameras um, and she actually helped the department to, to look at what would be a suitable camera to purchase for patients to use. Um, so it was a patient-friendly cam uh, camera. And with that, she started to um, just practice taking photos she then was encouraged to think about her own sort of brief on, on if she wanted to develop a project around her photography. And so she was able to come up with her own idea and her plan and how she was going to do that. Um, and gradually, she started to develop this um, portfolio. Alongside that, we um, were aware that she was a very keen cook, and so she used um, her cooking sessions to also take photographs and record her cooking processes um, and what started to happen was that she started to feel that she had more um, of an identity. She kept started to say, I'm, I'm, I feel like a photographer, I feel that I'm able to document things that are going on um, and, and I have that control. Um, so we were able to support her to have a camera when she went out on leave um, and that she could use the camera and when she came back we were able to download the images onto the computer which she, she did and then she was able to go through the kind of photographs she had been taking on her trips out. So that led on to um, highlighting that, you know, that kind of um, engagement increased her confidence she developed her interests, and um, we were able to provide the environment um, to allow a safe space for her to, to create and think. 
um, and that, that goes with all the work and all the patients that we work with um, about looking at, at our environment and making sure that, that we are able to allow it to be uh, of benefit for, that, for them. Um, this sense of achievement um, is just seeing how somebody can come up with an initial idea and then that idea can actually grow and come into something that is then brilliant and can be exhibited and then can be put forward for either community art um, exhibitions or go through to Kersler. So um, these sort of build on self-esteem and, and support um, self-worth. And we as therapists um, and staff within the hospital is about empowering our patients to be a creative individual. Um, and that's really the base of it all. I'm sure there's you know, people that are listening to this presentation that have lots of other things and, and we're all trying to do the same thing. So um, it, it's a very empowering um, process. This um, piece here um, sort of encapsulates everything that I've just been talking about. It's, um, it's won the Platinum Award for Mural um, in this year's Curse Awards. And this piece um, was done on a mental illness ward uh, where we had um, very low engaged patients and um, a couple of patients that were more high functioning. The um, ideas, again, came from an initial um, discussion group. We had an hour a week, where we, an hour and a half, sorry, where we offered um, uh, art session, uh, group art session. And um, it was from this that um, they felt they wanted to do a mural. So the same process of making sure that we were able to do it on the ward, uh, on the ward, on the ward, is you know, going through the operations manager and getting that agreement. Um, and what we had to look at here was that um, not every patient had the ability to actually stand and paint on a wall. Um, not, none of the patients felt confident to stand and paint the base of the um, mural. But one girl who was beginning to become more confident with her own artwork um, felt that she wanted to have a go. So um, this patient and myself worked on laying down the, the, the background of the, the, the scene. Um, and then what we looked at, we looked at um, taking um, photocopied or printed images of um, animals and images that, that were coming from the patients that they wanted to add to this mural um, so that these uh, images could actually be done on a table and could be done either with painting with felt pens or anything like that and then they were given the, um, the choice to go um, and place the image where they wanted to place it on the mural so that was how we had that sort of interactive um, piece of artwork uh, this again took about 12 weeks and sometimes the patients weren't keen, they didn't want to do any work so when we had times like that we would um, use the mural as a sort of a discussion point and get them to look at um, it, it in storytelling. So the mural was finished and, and everybody on the ward contributed to it felt so incredibly proud of it. Um, so it was a real talking point, and even staff that visited the ward, the patients were very proud. They wanted to show them what they'd done, um, and it, it became a very useful um, piece of artwork because it allowed uh, patients to, to engage in a conversation between each other about the mural and, and make up little stories. So it was a really successful piece of work. Um, so I'm going to move on to the standard components, um, which is um, everything that we look at when we're working with uh, an individual. 
So um, the, the standard components are physical, cognitive, um, physiological, interpersonal, motivation, meaning, and effective activity. And um, coming from an OT perspective, um, we need to always be aware um, when we're working with um, our patient group that these are the areas that we're able to identify and able to um, support. So, um, you know, looking at the physical, it's looking about strength, um, the standing tolerance, the coordination, the mobility and the fine motor skills, and stamina. And sometimes the stamina, even if somebody joins something for five minutes um, or ten minutes, that's really good. Um, and that might be something quite important to that individual. Um, looking at the interpersonal, it's about developing relationships and friendships when we're doing group work. Um, this became very apparent when we did a textile project um, on a ward hanging, um, and that was a really lovely um, group, and it, it sort of it had people coming in and coming out of it, but it, it became a real focus for the hospital. It was a hospital-wide group, um, sewing group. Um, there's a lot of dis discussion work that goes on, and um, not always listening to the people that, that make the loudest noises, but it's actually trying to encourage those who are quiet to think about ideas and put their ideas forward. Um, and it's looking at the motivation behind what we do, helping them to feel motivated by it. There are times when they lose motivation, and we have to try and re-engage them in that. Um, and it's about feeling that, that somebody can feel more confident, um, they feel that they've got a connection with something, that if somebody makes a comment on a piece of their um, artwork, that they, it's actually said something to them and, and it's said back. We have the housekeeping team that will often comment and um, talk to the, the girls and some of the guys about the work that they're doing. Um, and, you know, everybody in the hospital or if they see something going on, that they'll sort of engage patients in, in, in asking what it's about and what they're doing. So that's that's the sort of range of standard code components that we, we make sure that we're sort of aware of um, the individuals, and so we, we can uh, report on how they're progressing. So um, this is the section of the fantasy land where um, some of the slides is just giving you an idea of, of the work close up. Um, the dragonfly in the middle um, picture, um, the dragonfly that's right in the middle, that was done by one of our patients who um, never engaged in anything. She was quite disruptive. Um, she had poor coordination. Um, but one day she just stood up there and she just got her colours and she drew that dragonfly and it, it was the most wonderful thing to see, and, and the whole staff group and peers were, were just amazed and really clapped her because it was just such a wonderful thing to, to experience her engaging in this piece of work. So that's that one. This is the um, textile project I mentioned earlier, um, which was the 2012 Platinum Award, and it was actually exhibited at the um, exhibition in um, the South Bank um, in London. And um, this piece of work was just everything that I've talked about, um, looking from the, the initial concept right through to the finished um, artwork. So, and that was a really fun piece of work. Again, that probably took about eight months of work, um, but it was a very interactive piece of work. Um, so, yeah. so, the other thing that um, I, I also promote here is creative education. Um, I'm the education coordinator at the Dean, and um, I often find that education be quite a, the word education be, can be quite a barrier. So. Um, what I tend to do is I come in with a creative stance, um, which 
um, will always have the embedded skills of maths, English, and IT in there. Um, and it's, it's supporting people through the um, creative education just to look at their various skills and what the skills um, are when we, we do a piece of artwork. And it's all about planning and organization, overcoming fear, discussion, doing independent activities and learning and, and gaining a sense of identity. Um, and just also um, developing research skills, which sometimes is that's all they want to do is just go onto the internet and just look up um, pictures, look up um, you know pieces of music that they may have liked, and then find out about the the singer or the songwriter. So it, it, education, creative education, is is huge, and, and it's something that I will use as a a way around somebody who doesn't want to do the formal education program that I offer. Um, this is an example of the creative education project that I did with a, a lady who um, was interested in pop art. And so we did a lot of research around that. And she chose this piece, um, this artist, and um, but put her own interpretation in the middle of it, she she wrote her own words around it. Um, that piece is uh, 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters, yeah, so meter by meter square, and that piece has gone forward uh, this year to Kersler. And it was a very dramatic piece of work. And again, it was solving problems on how to make the dots, um, how to enlarge the image, and, and get exactly what she wanted. From that. Um, she then took um, the photograph of her nephew and she um, enlarged a section of it and put that onto a canvas and applied this sort of similar um, uh, style of pop art onto um, this uh, portrait of her nephew. So the achievements. Um, come about from, from art is like social inclusion through art. Um, and again, um, like I said prior, previously, it's about getting the recognition from staff, peers, family, and the wider community. Um, being part of the Kersler Awards, um, having the hospital art exhibitions, um, using professional posters of patients' art displayed on the wards. And how we do that is we take images of patients' artwork and then we send those off to a company that, that will then print um, really high quality posters that are there and stuck straight onto the, the wall. Um, we also are able to do that with patients' poems. Um, we don't put any names on the patient's artwork um, but um, or poems, but the poems have been a great success um, and those are, are found around the hospital as well. We have an amazing recording studio that's managed by a professional um, music producer um, who also works on the walls, but he is able to support patients to create songs, um, to do singing, to, to practice you know, and develop their singing skills, and also songwriting skills. Sometimes we may take um, a poem that somebody's written and, in, and look at if we can turn the elements of the poem into a song. We also um, do hospital art events, uh, looking at um, bringing uh, a, a small group of people from the community in as part of our audience. Um, and then the patients have um, read poems, they've done singing, um, they've talked about what they do um, in the Dean, and, and um, then we have like a social event afterwards um, where the patients and the visiting, external visitors um, socialize. Um, the other thing we do is that we're um, part of a, a community arts festival that runs over two weeks, and currently that's happening at the moment. Um, and we put an exhibition up of patient artwork and that allows the patients to, who can to actually go and see their artwork in a, a public event. And also, we encourage public to give feedback to, to what they've seen. The other thing is that we're um, looking at 
how we can support patients to, to present and talk about what they do, and that's a part of their sort of presentation skills work that we, we try and um, support them with, um, and that's been very um, encouraging. This piece here um, was done by uh, one of our patients who um, will work independently. Um, she was, took on the um, competition for the PIC recovery competition poster, and she came second place. Um, we, there was a massive um, amount of uh, wonderful artwork that came in from that competition that PIC ran, and this is just one of hers, um, her piece. And again, talking about hope and recovery, it just sort of demonstrates that, that, that the patients do want to look at recovery, but they do find it very scary, and um, we just have to support that as best we can while, while they're with us. So going on to the Cursor Awards, um, very quickly, the, they were formed by Arthur Kersler. There's a, a very good um, website that um, you can go on to the Kersler Awards website that gives you all the information. Um, the, the outstanding um, part of Kersler is that, that the judges who, who look at the artwork are actually um, national artists in their own right and professional artists in their own right. right. So they use their expertise. Um, to select awards and winning artwork. So I think as Curdle has grown, and it's now, I think this year, it's about 8,000 entries, um, it's becoming a huge um, piece of work for judges um, to, to choose um, from the, the large selection of artwork. Um, it provides pop, um, recognition. Every award is um, given a certificate, and there's constructive feedback. Um, often given to patients when they, they get their certificates back. There's a wonderful mentoring scheme um, which patients can apply to if they're going to be moving on to the community or um, and that's something that we always offer when we get them to fill in the application form. And there's three national exhibitions um, put on by Kurt, the, the London one at the South Bank and one in Scotland and one in the northwest of England. And the other thing that they do is they promote family days. And we've had a couple of our patients here who have met their families up there, and Kersler has um, provided uh, a lunch and uh, time for patient and family to walk around the exhibition and explain it to them. So the Kersler Platinum Award for Shadows was a piece of that. Um, was done through a photography group that we did, um, and that won the classroom award, and also the, the patient sold that piece of work um, at Kersler. I put some patient voice pieces in here because I think it's important that, you know, it is about the patient and it's about hearing how it, the work we do affects them. Uh, so this is through from one of um, our patients. Um, I'll let you read that quietly. So she's really, um, it's been a huge, huge thing for her um, to have been recognized by Kersler. This is another one of her photographs um, that won a platinum award in 2013, and that was one that she just took instantly, just a moment. Um, she was down on the beach in Brighton. So we do take uh, patients out when we can to, to other locations so that they can get ideas. We take them to museums and art galleries as well just to give them some idea of putting art in the context. And again, another winner, and that piece was used for PIC um, marketing as well. So very clever, she set that up, she planned it, she organised how she wanted it to happen, and it's uh, a great success, that one. This is just looking at um, some of the 
areas in the hospital. It's just one corridor, and that's our main corridor. And it's just about, um, they're not brilliant pictures, I do apologise. They're just about how we um, use the space to, to put artwork up. And this is, again, um, a piece of work from, from a patient's voice for somebody who has been showing work in, in the community arts festival. So yeah, that was um, an interesting, getting um, a newspaper interested and doing an article about it as well, so, and, and the work that we do at the Dean. Um, this is the current exhibition that's happening at the moment. It's in the uh, main church in the community, um, and it's a, a really beautiful space, and um, this is just part of the exhibition. Um, it, there's also area where we have um, non-visual work on display and a range of photographs and textiles. And here are just some patient voice comments that I'm sort of going to finish off with. last one is quite long, so um, she was very keen that people knew that she had personality disorder and how long she had been in a mental health service um, and that she was studying for a degree prior to her admission. So again, um, we have no measuring tool um, other than the patient's voice, and um, I feel that it's something that we really need to um, make more use of because at the end of the day, they, they're going to speak for us and the work that we do. So to conclude this presentation, uh, psychiatric patients can find recovery through art. Whilst patients are in our care, we give as much encouragement and promote their creative skills. Promoting the experience of art as a therapeutic and enjoyable activity could increase a patient's confidence to continue to use these skills on their journey of recovery. The examples of patients' own voice demonstrates the effect of how art has helped and given hope to these individuals. Our unique position as therapists allow us to work with patients to help them discover and gain confidence. I feel that recording the patient's voice through a creative process will capture a better understanding of how patients are finding hope of recovery through art. So um, that concludes my presentation. Um, I hope you found it interesting, um, but I think as therapists in, in all of the PIC hospitals, we, we aim to, to get the most of our, out of our patients and I just know from experience, from personal experience and also working in this field um, as, as I do, that um, creative thinking and, and education and art groups and all the things that we do um, from initial concept ideas is something that, um, you know, we can only grow and help um, our patients while they're with us. But I, I feel if there's one thing I'd like to leave with is that we need to collate the patient's voice and get that uh, documented um, because that, that's actually what it's all about. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I hope it was interesting and um, I hope more of you will feel confident in, in um, promoting the Kersler Trust hospital art exhibitions and um, collaborating with the community. Thank you.